audio jungle. In this video, what I want to focus on is a type of glaucoma called angle closure glaucoma. Now, now remember, if we look at the anatomy, the angle we're talking about is measured by an equipment called granioscopy that is available to optometrists and ophthalmologists and it is the angle between the iris and the sclera and this is where the aqueous humor fluid in the anterior chamber of the eye is drained away um, through the trabecular meshwork. So the narrower that angle is the the, the more difficult it is for drainage to occur. So if that angle is normal, it's called open angle glaucoma. If this angle is narrow, then it should be, it's called angle closure glaucoma. Angle closure glaucoma is a much rarer form of glaucoma. However, it has a higher risk of progression and leading to blindness. So it is really important that when you're diagnosed with glaucoma, that you find out from your, uh, your doctor whether the type of glaucoma you have is angle closure glaucoma or open angle glaucoma. Um, look, whatever form of glaucoma you have, it is really important to comply with the treatment and the monitoring protocols. However, if you have angle closure glaucoma, it is especially important that you comply with treatment because the rate of progression uh, towards blindness is much, much more significant. So the prevalence of angle closure glaucoma is much less. Uh, in the United Kingdom, about 0.4% of people that have angle closure glaucoma. It does increase with age, just like with um, open angle glaucoma, such that by the age of 70 years old, 0.7% uh, of the population have angle closure glaucoma. Angle closure glaucoma is a form of glaucoma that is much more prevalent amongst women. So for every one man that has angle closure glaucoma, three women have angle closure glaucoma. What about worldwide? About 3% of the global population have um, open angle glaucoma and 0.5% uh, have uh, angle closure glaucoma. Angle closure glaucoma is also much more common in people of Asian um, ethnicity. So the prevalence amongst people of Asian ethnicity. So let's talk about what symptoms a patient might have if they have primary angle closure glaucoma. So just like with open angle glaucoma, they may not have any symptom at all and the there is usually progressive visual loss, usually gain of the peripheral visual field normally um, and being affected uh, in the first instance. And patients may only develop symptoms when they've unfortunately lost quite a lot of their peripheral vision. It is more likely, however, for patients with angle closure glaucoma to present with acute angle closure glaucoma. We often suspect this in someone who's developed repeated episodes of painful red eye um, or if they're presenting acutely they may have you know very painful red eye the conjunctiva might be quite injected their pupil uh, may be irregular instead of a nice round pupil um, it may also be precipitated by trying to for example read or watch tv in a dark room along with severe eye pain they may also have a terrible, terrible headache with an inability to tolerate light, wanting to be in a darkened room and um, may have nausea and vomiting associated with this. Presenting with acute angle closure glaucoma is usually an indication for uh, rapid intervention in hospital, um, often with eye drops or injection or tablet medication uh, that are given to lower uh, the pressure within the eye. When hospital admission is not possible acutely, uh, it is advised that the patient um, lies down flat on their back without any pillow on their head, uh, close their eyes uh, for several minutes, and this may actually help to reduce the pressure. In the absence of acute angle closure glaucoma, the the diagnosis of you know of, of primary angle closure glaucoma which presents more insidiously without any uh, obvious symptoms uh, and causes this persistent progressive visual loss. And this diagnosis, again, is usually only made uh, during routine eye examination. Um, but once the diagnosis has been made, it is really, really important that you comply with the management plan, the use of eye drops, the, uh, you know, the, the periodic 
eye checks in order to monitor your pressure so that actions can be taken more promptly to control that pressure and if necessary even to have you know laser surgery or, or, or surgical intervention. The difficulty and challenge with uh, any form of glaucoma is that uh, patients can actually cope with quite severe loss of visual field um, and that is because um, you know one eye may be compensating for visual field that's lost in the other eye and so uh, the patient may actually not notice themselves that their vision has significantly deteriorated until it is way 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 too advanced and unfortunately any vision that's lost cannot be cannot be repaired or recovered so a key part in the management of uh, you know angle closure glaucoma or any form of glaucoma for that matter is the, the awareness that there is a condition called glaucoma that exists that will often not have any symptoms until it is way too extensive uh, to, to to advance so let's discuss what you can do to, to help um, make that diagnosis early and improve your outcome so it is really important to note that look angle closure of glaucoma is much more common in patients of uh, asian ethnicity whereas primary open angle glaucoma is much more common in patients of african ethnicity so it is also important to aware that if you have a family history of glaucoma the chances of you developing glaucoma is much much higher if there's a family history and you're over the age of 40 years old then you should be having regular uh, eye checks at least once every two years and depending on your risk factors it may even be at least once every year and if you're in the uk uh, having a family history and being of um, uh, over the age of 40 years old you can have these eye checks done uh, freely under the National Health Service. So what is the prognosis of ocular hypertension and glaucoma? Well, with ocular hypertension in someone who has not yet developed glaucoma, the aim is to prevent the progression towards glaucoma for various reasons, depending on you know, your ethnicity, um, the structure of the eye, certain medications that you take, and compliance with um, monitoring the pressure within the eye, um, some patients will go on to develop a glaucoma. Now studies have shown that if uh, your ocular hypertension goes unmonitored or untreated, um, about 9.5%, so almost 10% of people will develop a glaucoma over a period of five years. But if it's monitored and treatment is started uh, appropriately, then only about 4% uh, go on to develop glaucoma uh, over a five year period. Now, if you've already been diagnosed with having glaucoma, Remember, any vision that you've already lost cannot be recovered and any vision that you go on to lose down the line cannot be recovered with the best surgery or medication or laser treatment in the world. Okay, So it is really important that you comply with treatment, that you comply with the, uh, the management plan that is put in place for you. Uh, so the aim is to prevent the progressive loss of vision. Um, unfortunately, most patients do not develop any symptoms at all to warn them of the fact that their vision is deteriorating until the majority of the nerve or vision, the optic nerve, have been uh, damaged. Um, and by the time you develop symptoms, usually 80 to 90% of your optic nerve has already been damaged. So complying with treatment is super duper important here. And normally when I have the discussion with patients who have glaucoma about why it's really important to comply with their medication, uh, it, it's, I use the analogy of hypertension. So, um, you know, hypertension that can lead to heart attacks and strokes. In the same way that hypertension uh, usually causes no symptoms in people, and people, some patients use, oh, well, I'll take my blood pressure medication when I develop a headache. In the same way that it causes no symptoms uh, in the vast majority of patients, glaucoma also causes no symptoms until it is too late. Likewise, hypertension causes no symptoms until it is so high and the damage has already been done and someone's unfortunately developed uh, damage to their heart, their brain or their kidneys. Um, so coming back to glaucoma, it is really important to comply with your medication, attend uh, your regular checkups, um, and use your drops properly. Use your drops properly. And if you develop any side effect, don't suffer in silence, okay? Speak to your GP, your optician, your ophthalmologist, uh, so that uh, they can talk you, you through what to do. 
okay, to reduce the risk of side effects and if necessary, change your drops. Until next time, look after yourself and stay safe and I hope to see you on the next video. If anything here has stood out well for you, share it. If you genuinely like this video, you know, so, um, click the like button, subscribe to our channel to be the first to be notified about our new video releases. And look, I always say one of the most selfish things any of us can do is keep useful knowledge to ourselves. That is why I'm sharing this with all of you so that you can be better um, uh, aware and be empowered to have a much more high powered conversation with your your, clinic, your doctor. Uh, and that is helpful for us because uh, the, the more uh, the more informed you are, the better it makes that conversation and the better the management outcome. Okay, so if you genuinely, genuinely found this useful, it will be selfish to keep it to yourself. Share it with your friends and your family so that they can benefit from it as well. Until next time, look after yourself, stay safe, and I wish you all the best on your journey towards becoming a master of your health.